Hey everyone, Irene Lyon here and welcome to this video, to this channel and to this entire world of healing trauma, nervous system health and all things neuroplasticity. A little while ago I posted a video and I'll, I'll post it close to here around the practical work that I do. I call the practical form of my work neurosensory exercises. Just in a short little snippet I'll mention here, those are a blend of um, somatic experiencing principles, Feldenkraisian principles and also my work learning um, somatic practice, so getting into deeper somatic levels at the stress organ level. I'm not going to get into everything today because go watch that one if you are new to me and have never experienced the practical side of my work. Now today I wanted to flip this over and talk about the importance of the theory and the education. And the reason why is because um, practical and theory, education, they form really the foundational aspects of everything that I do and teach to you here, um, and especially within my courses and programs and classes. And I'm going to give you a story and then an example to paint the picture as to why it is so important to have both. So ages ago, I was at a conference. Um, it was a business conference and um, I was sitting at a table with a group of people, all strangers, and um, one of them was interested in the parasympathetic nervous system. And that was apparently what they were doing in their work with their students, their clients. And I said, oh, I am too. I, I work at the nervous system level and really focus on um, obviously the parasympathetic nervous system because it's part of our autonomic nervous system. And I said, so do you really teach your students and get into the distinctions of um, the parasympathetic nervous system and the different branches of the, the dorsal portion of the vagus nerve and the ventral portion of the vagus nerve and the differences between the high tone and low tone dorsal? And, and the person said, well, no, we don't. Um, and they actually looked a little confused, I think. Maybe they didn't actually know these distinctions. And they quickly said, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All that my clients care about are the results. They don't need to know what's happening in their body. I disagree with that. Um, I think that us as humans, we deserve the benefit of the doubt, that we deserve to know as much as we can at a high, high level because these brains of ours have the capacity to compute higher level complex stuff because that's just how it was designed. So um, I actually left that table, didn't stay with them for the rest of the conference and had a great time. But I start with that story because there's a little bit of an issue right now I'm seeing in our very trauma immersed worlds of health and wellness. And by that, I mean trauma. That word is a real buzzword and a hot topic right now, as is the nervous system, as is the vagus nerve. And just because someone is saying, oh, I work with the vagus nerve or the parasympathetic nervous system does not necessarily mean that they understand all of the distinctions. Heck, I probably don't know all of the distinctions because we haven't uncovered all of the distinctions, nor has Stephen Porges, Peter Levine, Kathy Kane, Besser van der Kolk, all of the people that I have studied and worked with or read, um, we are all learning together. However, what I do know from the work I've done with my students and my, my mentors and all these things is that when we understand how this system works at a very intricate level to the degree that we understand now, when we are in the midst of a panic attack, when we're in the midst of a crisis, when we're in the midst of um, an accident on the side of the road and we want to help, all these potentials that might occur to us as humans living in a complex, ever-changing world, when we have the theory on board, we can quickly assess the situation and go, ah, this is what's happening there, or oh, that's what's happening there, I better do this, or oh, I better get away from this because this isn't changing and I'm gonna keep myself safe. When we understand these distinctions at a very deep level, um, and I'm not gonna go into all the levels today, I will post a few videos, but all of my videos are, most of them are highly education focused, and of course, programs and that are very, very deeply education-based focused and practical. Um, so you can get into those there, but. When we have this basis, we 
know what to do at a different level, then throw in the practical capacity to track our somatic experience and our feelings and our movements and all these things. And we have kind of this beautiful match made in heaven. So I'm going to give you an example that came up in a podcast that I was on a little while ago. And I was explaining to the, the host why it's so important, again, in my opinion, for parents, for example, to understand this stuff because there might be a trapped trauma in one of their kids from an accident or a surgery or maybe a birth trauma. And if they don't understand how the autonomic nervous system stores in their child's physiology these old memories at that fight, flight, freeze level, this procedural level, they might be witnessing the potential to help their child, but they chalk it up to just bad behavior and then they punish the child or they ignore it or they don't even see the nuance of what's changing in that kid's behavior. So my example to this um, uh, show, and I'll post the show um, uh, below this video so you can listen to the full explanation. Um, the example was, let's just say little Johnny, I think that's what I used, was born, um, came out of mama or even C-section and the umbilical cord, cord was wrapped around his neck. Now, this is very common. And if you have had that happen to you, it's possible that as I talk about this, you might start to experience what might be considered an activation in your nervous system. You might feel a little bit of panicky anxiety, you might feel your throat constrict, or you might go quickly into what's called dorsal shutdown and your system is gonna to start to get sleepy and tired because that um, event for you was so stressful that you actually may have gone into kind of near death mode because lack of oxygen was happening in your system. So let's just say little Johnny comes out, umbilical cord wrapped around his neck and he's fine, they get it off, mama's fine, baby's fine, it's a loving household, all the things are there, food, shelter, safety, containment, mom and dad like each other, et cetera, et cetera. But let's just say little Johnny one day is sitting with mom and all of a sudden he has a desire to um, take this scarf that she has maybe around her, her shoulders and make it really tight. Let's just say um, another example, he is playing around his sister and let's just say sister or cousin has a bunch of Barbies and there's a telephone cord, and I know telephone cords don't exist really anymore, but play with me here. And there's a telephone cord there, and he takes the Barbie or the doll or whatever, and he takes this cord and he has a desire to wrap it around the neck and choke it. Now, let's just say again, mom is there with the scarf and little Johnny wants to, to tighten the scarf really, really tightly, or put this cord around Barbie's neck. Most people, if they see this and they don't understand the significance of early trauma, being choked with an umbilical cord, how procedural memories and somatic memories get stored in the body, if they don't understand that little Johnny might be actually looking to complete and act out the movement of pulling that cord off of his neck, parent, babysitter, aunt, uncle may not realize that him trying to tighten the scarf around mother's neck or put the cord around Barbie's neck is a behavior. It is a method of trying to complete this early traumatic response where he was strangled by actually mimicking the strangling, but then having maybe mom play along and say, oh, I'm choking, I'm choking, okay, let's save me, let's save me, pull it off, pull it off. And then he goes and he pulls off. Or Barbie is there choking, obviously not really. And maybe mother sees this and is like, oh, Johnny, what you doing to Barbie there? It looks like she's choking. What would you like to do to help her survive? And just knowing kids and working with kids, chances are little Johnny's gonna say, well, I wanna take it off. And then mother goes, oh my goodness, well, let's take it off. Do you need help? And he maybe he's like, no, I don't need help. I'm going to do it myself. And so he takes it off. So I've given you two quick examples because there could be a myriad of examples 
in how little Johnny might help complete and deactivate the early trauma of his, him having an umbilical cord around his neck. So many scenarios. But I wanted to give you those too because sometimes it could be with an, an object like a Barbie or it could be the child actually trying to do something to you, the parent, or a third scenario, maybe a little Johnny has an obsession with putting things around his neck and tying them really, really tight to the point where you say, oh, little Johnny, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have your scarf that tight or you shouldn't have that thing wrapped around your neck cinched, you're gonna lose circulation. But if we understand and remember, oh my goodness, little Johnny had this happen to him when he was born, this is that thing Irene or Irene's teachers or colleagues were talking about where he's actually trying to heal this early trauma trauma through his behaviors, through his actions, by completing a, a movement protocol that releases that survival stress from his system. Now, of course, let's just say we allow little Johnny to go through all those different scenarios in, in whatever way he has to that is where then you, the caregiver, has to stay with him. There might be tears. Maybe he has more energy and he feels, oh, I can run, I can run, I want to run. Maybe you have to take little Johnny outside. Maybe you have to play some games with him. Maybe there's some growls that come out. Maybe there's some aggression because now he's finally free. Again, so many different ways that this can play out. But when we understand how the physiology traps these things inside, and we have the understanding of this can come out in so many different ways. We as the, let's just say adults, the big person, the care, the caregiver can see this happening and then we can help it, um, we can help facilitate the healing. Whereas so often I'm sure what may happen in a situation like this, and of course I'm generalizing, but this is just how it is. Most people don't understand this nuance of survival physiology and how it gets trapped in our tissues and how as adults and little ones, we try to play it out so that we can heal. Many will see this situation or experience this situation and be like, that's bad. We, we do not do violent things to Barbie. We do not do meanful, mean, scary things to mom. We don't choke ourselves, that's wrong. Um, depending on the age, we got, might get punished, we might get a slap, we might get the thing taken away from us. And you can only, I can only imagine in that moment, the tears, the tantrum, the, the unheard and unfelt quality. You didn't, you didn't honor what my system was bringing out and therefore I'm now going to attack you more or I'm gonna have a tantrum or I'm gonna go and punch my sister for example. So I give you this example of little Johnny and being born with an umbilical cord wrapped around his neck and him being fine and him being in maybe a really loving household, but then all these different ways in which he may start to play out, act out, behave out a desire to release these old traumatic stressors. Um, we could sit here for five hours with all these different kinds of ways that we get hurt and, and harmed and abused and how we might express. Um, and of course, that's where we, when we understand the basic foundational theory of how the nervous system stores this stuff and how it can come out in all sorts of different ways. And what we really need to do is listen, observe, see, notice, contain, provide safety, provide curiosity, um, interaction, social engagement, and allow, let's just say in the case of a little person, that little person to help you guide the way. And maybe they ask for something. Maybe they say, I need this, or I need you to go get me a pan or a pot, or I need you to get me some water. At that moment, we don't say, well, why do you need water? they need it for some reason that you won't know, right? We don't know. And so that's where, of course, within reason, you don't want to harm yourself or hurt them or the environment. You play with this. So again, theory is super important. Understanding this is super important. For parents, um, I, cannot, I cannot stress enough how important it is to understand these distinctions at the nervous system level and how things get trapped. 
it can make the world of difference when working with and being with and bringing up kids and in relationship too. If you're with someone and they have a history and let's just face it, all of us have a history of something. Um, when we know this and when we see our spouse, our partner, our best friend doing something that's really not within their character, maybe we get curious or maybe we leave them alone or maybe we say, hey, do you need some help? Um, and if they, they say yes, we give them help. And if they say no, then we respect that boundary. There's so many uh, avenues that we can go here with this importance of education. Um, I hope this video has been useful. Um, again, all of my videos, my eBooks, my trainings, my courses give you deeper elements of education and theory. So I hope if you're new here, you keep learning and you keep diving in. If you've been around for a long time, this might be old news to you, but thank you for watching and reviewing. And if you know of someone who would benefit from this information, please share it with them. Um, the more we understand this and the more the world understands understands this, I just think the world, world will be a better place and we'll be able to heal at a much faster rate and with a lot less tension and um, triggers, really. Thank you for being here and we will see you next time.